Welcome to our 2021 Farm to Table event with the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona. I'm Michael McDonald, the CEO. So good to have you with us this year. Even though we're socially distanced, we miss you. We'd love to be in person, but this year we're at our farm, Las Milpitas Farm. So excited to be here. There's all kinds of great fresh produce growing here in the fields right now. So we look forward to learning more about all of our programs at the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona and how you are supporting each and every one of these important programs, including how do we get food from this farm to all of our tables here in Southern Arizona for all of our clients in need, in great need, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. You've been so generous. We thank you for that. So let's take the time to learn more about our farm to table programs, all the ways in which we are getting fresh produce into the pantries and into the tables of all of our families here in Southern Arizona. Hi everybody, welcome to Las Milpitas. My name is Eric Mesa. And right now we are right next to the Santa Cruz River where agriculture has been practiced for over 4,000 years. Today, I wanna to show you of one of the few things that we do here at the Milpitas Community Farm. We're located right next to the Learning Garden, a space dedicated for you to learn food production in the desert. We also offer plots of families that live nearby, can actually have a space where they can grow their food. Thankfully to your donations, right now we're able to provide everything that a family needs, including the water, the soil amendments, the plants, and the training that they need to feel comfortable to grow their own food. We also offer educational opportunities, workshops open up to the community. We do a lot of work around figuring out what is the best practices so we can grow food in the desert in a sustainable way. We support farmers so they can sell at the farmer's market. And today we're on a beautiful day hosting or volunteer work days. I won't be able to cover all the wonderful things that are happening right now, but I wanna extend an invitation for you to come and take a look at it by yourself. Every Saturday we're open from nine to noon to volunteer work day. So come on over and check it out by yourself. So me and my family, we have a garden here at the Milpitas Community Farm where we grow vegetables like cilantro, curly lettuce, and so much more. And it's definitely a blast. We're learning many things. The first one is how to can grow vegetables and taking care of them in the workshop we're coming here. We look forward to coming every Saturday. We wake up early and try to get here on time. And the first thing I do is I come and check our plot and see how it's growing. It kind of like shocked me to see how like easy everything just kind of grew and like you come one week and it's very little and then you come next week and it's huge and you're like where did all the time go yesterday the little one asked me um is today when pitas no it's tomorrow saturday oh yeah i mean pitas yeah 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 and jumping and jumping they really like this place and we are so happy to to found this place and to be here with our plot you can buy it from the store and it'll be like okay it's good and then you get it from here and it's like this is wonderful. <laughs> this is awesome. It has a special flavor, so and and special mm, like sentimiento. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can feel the love in it. Yeah. Basically. We've been doing lots of uh, workshops, and it's been awesome just kind of seeing the plants grow and harvesting the plants, and being able to like say like I created that, I grew that. The other day we learned about. Uh, how to can grow um, fruit trees and that was really really awesome and we're we learned how to plant in garlic lettuce different vegetable and we're working right now on painting a bench the other time we was uh, con constructing a, a bench with adobe and Every Saturday is uh, a challenge for us. Thank you, Eric, for letting us know what's all the incredible work happening here at Las Malpitas Community Farm. Raquel and daughters, I'm looking at your plot of land over here. You've got cilantro, chard, you've got garlic, you've got onions, you've got everything that a family could need right now. Broccoli, I see huge broccoli, wow, it's beautiful. 
so many families growing right now at Las Mapitas Community Farm. That's why we do this work, to feed families today, to help them feed themselves the culturally relevant food that matters to them to improve diets. That's what we're doing at Las Mapitas Farm. We're also, if we travel 60 miles down this road right now, right in front of me, we get to Nogales, Arizona, and we are rescuing so much fresh produce that normally would go to waste because it doesn't have a buyer. We want to learn more about why that is happening here. Hey, my name is Efrain Trigueras. I'm the Produce Operations Manager. We get calls for donations and we go out and bring them over. We sort them out and then we share with the other food banks, with the, our service area. And lately what we've been doing here, as you can see behind me, we have what we call a repack operation with the National Guard. Since COVID started, we started uh, doing this repacking, creating uh, food boxes with mixed bo produce boxes with multiple items. So you're able to do, create different meals, healthy, healthier meals that normally you are just get one. Now you're getting tomatillos, tomatoes, sometimes there's onions, potatoes. So we have to create a good box, a healthier box that you get at home and you can use it for different things and cook different things. I love it when I see in Facebook, when I, I, I see a comment back, oh, I just, I just got home with your box and I, I had some calabacitas, some squash with eggs, or I made a stew with the potatoes and, and the onions. It's gratifying to hear those. It's been really changing, really helping the community. And I think it's really gonna go further than what I think. For the mixed boxes, we check the quality, see how much shelf life they have, checking the temperature of the product, making sure that it's at the correct temperature and that way prolonging the life of the product. We started with two sites once a week and with the National Oil come over, we, we had the produce, we created those mixed boxes and created this drive-through free produce distribution where people in the community will come, drive through, open their trunks, they'll tell us in the beginning how many families, two families, and we'll just put the boxes in their trunks and they can be off their way, maintain their distance. So it started with 1,600 per week, but it now evolved to 7,000 per week. So we cover Cochise County, Pasquayaki, Santa Cruz County, and Pima County as well, and in different agencies there, uh, Paragonia, we go to Paragonia, Sierra Vista. So it's, we've been pretty busy. When the government, things were happening in the government, we could see how the flow would change to a lot of cars, to less vehicles, less families coming through. Where there was government, more government assistance, our numbers come down. But once it was over, we could feel cars and cars. People very thankful, stopping or saying thank you, or I really need it. I'm in the perfect spot. It's gratifying every day of what we do, where we, the families that we touch. In one way or another, we're at, at people's homes here in the community. And not only here, all over. We're so grateful for the National Guard. You guys have been helping us out since the pandemic began including at our produce rescue operation in Nogales, Arizona. So let's learn more about the National Guard and our great produce rescue operation out of Nogales, Sonora and Arizona. Dana Yost, our Chief Operations Officer. Tell us more, why is the National Guard doing all of this produce packing in Nogales, Arizona? Thank you, Michael. So we've been fortunate enough to have the National Guard support the food bank since about last April of 2020, when the pandemic really started, they've helped us with our distribution. We've also had a crew in Nogales, Arizona, helping us to repack uh, produce that is more challenged. You know, one of the things about the supply chain in Nogales is that um, we, re we receive produce that uh, can't be sold or the market isn't really there for it. And so sometimes the donors will hold that produce for a while and it'll be challenged with uh, some of it being waste and we need to sort that and um, the Guard has provided tremendous labor and support to do that. We've packed over 130,000 produce boxes that we've distributed wow. over the last 10 months all over Southern Arizona to, to families in need all over uh, our service area. So when you say it's challenged or it could go to waste, but it's still good, it's still good produce? It's absolutely good produce. It's uh, sometimes it's better than the stuff that you would buy in the store, but you know you may have 
um, 30 or 40 percent of that produce that's already sh showing some signs of decay. And so um, in a box of produce that might weigh 20 pounds, you might have five or six pounds of that that was bad. And so you need to put some labor into it to be able to pull the good produce out and get rid of the bad produce. And you know, we're providing a, an opportunity to help the donors not have that product go into the landfill. And, and we're also being able to capture produce that would otherwise go to waste and to serve that to families in need. You know, this year we're on track to hit about 80 million pounds of total food. More than half of that is going to be fresh produce out of Nogales, Arizona. That's tremendous. And so this is no cost to clients and families who need fresh produce. It's all free of charge thanks to the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona, Feeding America Network, and donors, Farm to Table. We really need your support. Whether it's Las Milpitas Farm or our Nogales Produce Rescue, go to communityfoodbank.org slash farm to table to donate today. There's a text to give option, and that's fast. And you can repeatedly do text to give. Well, that's all I'm saying. There's also a, a silent option opportunity for you. So thank you, Daniel Yost. Thanks, Efrain, Team Nogales, National Guard, for rescuing so much produce that would normally go to waste, feeding families today across Southern Arizona and beyond. So we've seen what's happening in Nogales, Arizona with all that fresh produce coming across the border. And that's winding up on families' tables today. It's winding up in school pantries. And we don't wanna forget our local farmers. We work with so many of them. We want them to be able to be successful and grow great, nutritious, culturally relevant food right here in our own backyard. And so we're gonna learn more about Merchant's Garden and what Billy and his team are doing to help our Utterback School Pantry get fresh local produce right into that school today. Who we are is Merchant's Garden. Uh, what we do is we make fresh food accessible to everyone. And how do we do it? We, we use aquaponics, which is, uh, we, use, we raise fish and the nutrients from the fish feed, feed the plants. And we also use hydroponics and that uses nutrients and feeds them. And we harvest the same day that we deliver. Once in a while, we have to harvest a large order the night before, but it's the freshest lettuce you can find. We harvest it we, by hand, we inspect it, we make sure only the beautiful food goes out to you. Getting our product in the school pantry is an extension of what we always did. We, when we initially started, we always had product going to TUSD, and when the pandemic started, the school stopped buying our stuff. Having this continue that pipeline also helps us to continue our production process and also continues our support with kids getting to eat healthy food. From the very beginning, it was meant for us to work with the Community Food Bank. There's a farmer's market that the Community Food Bank does for the farmers where I drop the product off and they sell it for me. So I don't have to be at the farmer's market, they do it. And at times those were some of my only customers at the beginning too, you know, so it was, they really have helped. I mean, without the Community Food Bank support, I would have just said, uh, let's just close it or something. My name is Alina Moritzen. I am the Community Development Partnerships Coordinator at the Food Bank. So I work in the local Food Pathways team and also with the Child Nutrition Program. We heard from the community that they want more local produce in school pantries. Um, so sourcing some of our produce from local farmers is a really great way to get high quality, super nutritious food to folks while also aligning our spending with our values. Um, so the value of investing in local farmers and working to create a food system that works for everyone. Here at Utterback, we really wanna be a community school. And so one of the things that we have to address are some of the issues that exist within our community. And because they, they, they filter into our classrooms every day. And so one of our missions here is to remove those barriers for our students and so of course, hunger will always and continue to pose a problem and threat to education services everywhere. So by providing these services, we're hoping to provide a bridge to education for our students because we're hoping to appeal to the whole child, right? Not that we're just here for paper and pen work and now laptop work, but that we also to care about their well-being and they should care about their well-being. And so that is a vehicle that we see to higher levels of education. So we have our distributions uh, twice a month. It's the first Wednesday and third Wednesday. 
Uh, we usually have fresh produce provided by the community food bank. We serve not just Outerback students, but also Holiday Elementary and Cabot Elementary. And not just TUSD students, but stu people in the community. We have people in the community um, who just come over. They already know we have our distribution. They just show up. So it's open for everybody, not just for our students. We have a drive through system to make sure we keep it safe for everybody. It's good, it's quick, and it's convenient because I can't leave work. And this helps after work, not having to wait in a really, really long line. Um, as soon as I get here, um, usually I'm like the fourth or fifth person. We use every portion of it, and we got teenagers, and they eat everything. <laughs> it's right around the corner from where we live, so it's very convenient. We've always seen a need in the community. The pandemic has just made it more evident. So families that we never saw, we're suddenly seeing. Most people say, I just need a little something to get me to the next payday or to the end of the week or the end of the month. So this is vital uh, for families as well as for individuals. Those on a fixed income, those dollars just don't go far enough anymore. It's serving my fellow man. I believe that we are all responsible for each other. And so when I help someone, then they in turn have the opportunity to help someone else. So thanks again, Merchant Garden, for all you're doing at Utterback. And thank you for all the volunteers at Utterback School Pantry and all of our school pantries. Without our volunteers, our community leaders, and our school personnel, we would not be feeding so many kids in need in all of our school pantry programs. Childhood hunger here is so important in Southern Arizona, and I wanna learn more about it. We all wanna learn more about it at our Farm to Table event with Linda Kramer, our Child Nutrition Programs Coordinator. Linda, tell us more about what's happening at schools. So many schools have been closed throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. Tell us more what's happening in our schools. Well, when the pandemic first hit, all of the schools shut down and many of our program sites also closed. Within a few weeks, as the need started to grow and the lines are forming at the food banks, the school staff and community partners really stepped up to service these families in need. So Linda, how many schools pantries do we have these days? So we have close to 30 school pantries and we continue to expand in the rural areas those 30 school pantries serve over 100 schools in our service wow. area. Schools have become a really convenient place for families to go. Nowadays, parents not only drop off their kids to study and learn at their school, but it has become a community space. So parents can walk down the street in their own neighborhood and get resources that they may need. It's not surprising these days to see schools with a food pantry or a clothing bank a social worker, and just a connection to other resources that parents may need. It's really taken the whole community to help feed our children in our community throughout this pandemic. Now more than ever, childhood hunger is so severe here in Southern Arizona. We need your support. Farm to table participants, this year, 2021, go to communityfoodbank.org slash farm to table, text to give, learn more about our silent auction items, bid until it really hurts and give so that we can feed more kids. Thank you, Linda, for the work you do. Thank you. If it's farm to table at the Community Food Bank, it's Janos Wilder, Chef Janos Wilder, the best chef in all of Southern Arizona and beyond. And Janos is getting food from our Abundant Harvest Cooperative of local growers here at Las Milpitas and beyond. So many people are growing food. We've met Raquel and her daughters. We've talked to our school pantry folks and we know how much fresh produce means to everyone. Let's find out what Giannis is cooking up in his kitchen for us. Michael, thank you so much. It is so good to see you in the middle of the garden. They are just beautiful. The next time I see you, it's gonna be there. You're gonna have your desk in the middle of those gardens. I wouldn't leave there if I were you. It's so impressive to me, the work that you do with local gardeners and making food grown here locally in Southern Arizona available to the entire community. Sadly, this year, we're not able to be with all of you in person, cooking for you. I've loved doing these galas for the last three years, cooking for you in person. So welcome to my studio. Welcome to the Carriage House. 
We're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to start with a drink. One of my favorite drinks, and it really expresses the citrus that's grown here in southern Arizona. We've got these incredible tangelos that are made from Angle Orchard. These are as sweet as a baby's kiss in the morning. These are so good. Great grapefruit, oranges, lemons, all of this goes into the drink. This is a Serrano Citrus Cooler. So we're going to start with some Serrano chilies. We'll put a little in here. Some ginger. I like to put in these pieces of the limes. Just cut up your limes and put them in here because it not only gives you the juice from the lime, but it gives you the oils that come from the skin. That's super important. Some mint. The mint comes from Martha's City Farm. This is fantastic mint. Now you muddle. The muddling is a super important part of this. And you got to be vigorous with it. So really, you're pounding this. I put a couple of pieces of ice in the bottom of that because we want the ice. We want all of the abrasion that we can get. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see that's all pounded in there. We've got the juice out of the limes. I've already squeezed all the juices. We've got grapefruits. We've got oranges, lemons, tangelos I talked to you about earlier. The grapefruits, the oranges, and the lemons were grown by Kulyan Ibrayeva. They are delicious. So I'm going to pour this into here. Stir this all up. You can shake it if you like. I want this really cold, so I'm pouring this over ice. Oh, that's great. A little bit of soda water. Pellegrino is what I'm using. Stir that in. So now, I'm having this as a mocktail. I got some cooking to do for you. But if you want, put in some gin, a little Grand Marnier, and you've got a cocktail. I recommend that too. Let's see how this tastes. Oh my gosh. That is delicious. All the layers of flavor, the ginger, the serrano, these fruit are so beautiful. This is the time of year for citrus. Here's to you. I am going to show you how to make a delicious dish. It's a New York steak on all sorts of vegetables we got from the food bank. But did you know that in the first six months of the pandemic, the Tucson Community Food Bank, with its partners in the five counties in southern Arizona, served over 200,000 people. That's double the normal business that they usually do. Now, of course, their business is the business of helping people out. It is so impressive. It's so great that we have that resource in our community when we need it. This is a New York strip steak. I love this steak. I love the texture of it. It's tender, but it's not mushy. It's got a lot of intercellular fat. That's where the flavor comes from. This is about a pound. Now, wow, that's a big steak. We can feed four people with this steak with the dish that I'm making. So it really becomes economical as well. I'm using my trusty black iron skillet here. We're going to cook this to about a medium rare. I love the earthy flavor of the sweet potatoes and the beets. They become the centerpiece for this dish. The sweet potatoes are grown at Crooked Sky Farms. I took them and I baked them and I took them out of their skins and then put them through a little food mill and then seasoned them with molasses, chipotle, a little bit of butter and a little bit of cream. This really luscious puree, which are flavors of the ground and the earth, but also the flavors of Southern Arizona. So we're going to apply this right down the center of our plate here. These beets are made at Breckenfeld Family Growers and Ejide, who grows at Las Milpitas Farm. That's where Michael is right now. I took the beets, whittled them down, and poached them in water and honey and cinnamon and cayenne and star anise. It's the, the perfume is just 
perfuming the entire room, the flavor of these beets and the syrup, the syrup itself is fantastic. The beets, the earthiness from the beets is amazing to go with this dish. So we're just gonna take these beautiful little beets and place them right here. So I let this steak rest for a few minutes after we cooked it. That sort of lets the flavors and all the juices reintegrate into the meat. Now I'm gonna slice it. Oh boy, if you like your meat rare to medium rare, you are gonna be so happy. That's the way I like it. Oh, perfectly cooked. So this actually, as I said, could get three or four portions out of it, and that's what we're going to do. Now we're gonna take these beautiful slices of steak and just lay them right over that chipotle molasses sweet potato puree. Oh, that's beautiful. Now we've got these great snow peas. These come from the Nuestra Tierra Garden. They're gorgeous. All I did with the snow peas was I blanched them just in salted water, maybe 45 seconds, put them right in to shock them in ice water. That's what sets this beautiful color. I'm just gonna lay these out here. Put some on this side too. So we really see these gorgeous colors we're working with. All of these vegetables get to shine. They all get a little piece of glory here. So Brandon at Nuestra Tierra Garden, right outside the community food bank, picked these snow peas for us and brought us this gorgeous fennel. So the snow peas you see. The fennel, I made a vinaigrette out of. I took the fresh fennel, the bulb of the fennel, and a lot of the feathers from it, pureed them with all the same juices that we used in the drink. And extra virgin olive oil made this little citronette. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. And this is sort of our sauce now, which is right over the top of this meat. And there you have our dish, seared steak, chipotle molasses, sweet potatoes, these gorgeous beets that are really candy beets, our citrus vinaigrette and the snow peas. I like this dish so much, I might put it on my menu at Yano's Vamos and you can buy it to go someday. Thank you so much and thank you so much for all the support that you give to the Tucson Community Food Bank. Thank you, Janos. Man, you know how to cook in that kitchen, including our snap peas from our farm and about seven different local growers. Everyone who's contributed to this meal, thank you so much for what you do, growing Southern Arizona to be a healthier place and a more delicious place to live. Let's learn more about our farmer's market programs here at the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona, including our Santa Cruz River Farmer's Market, that stayed operational throughout this pandemic. They went drive-through. Let's learn more.
Fantastic, we have learned so much about our Santa Cruz Rivers Farmer's Market. It is the oldest and best farmer's market in all of Tucson. And it's run by our very own Abigail Plano, who is our market network and advocacy coordinator. That's Ab right, Michael. It is, and Abigail, before we start, I gotta tell you, I love the Ocotillo hat. You know, it's hard to pick with these hats, but I had to go for the Ocotillo because it's one of my favorites. And I do wanna say, you gotta give credit where credit is due. And one of our dear JVC volunteers, Beatrice, created that video last year, and we are very proud of that. We're so proud of the farmer's market. You guys have stayed operational throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right. So why do we do farmer's markets at the Community Food Bank? I know, right? It's actually a question that I've heard many times before. It is rather unique for a community food bank to be so embedded and to want to have a farmer's market. And I've got to say, the three things that really come to mind for me are providing food access, fair pay to farmers, and then also human connection. When I think about providing food access in particular, we're really committed to being a space that where people can come and utilize their public assistance dollars at our farmer's market. So we accept EBT food stamps, farmer's market nutrition program coupons, and we have a program where we match those dollar for dollar. So different community members can really stretch their grocery budget each week. And kind of along with that comes the fair pay to farmers. You know, something that the pandemic really taught us was about how important our local food system is and how important farmers are to our community. And much of the time their work is unseen. They're working in the backgrounds. And just as that has taught us, it has become more and more important for us to be able to provide consistent fair pay to those farmers. And one of the things that I've heard from multiple people is that being able to depend on that money has really alleviated some of the stress that they were experiencing due to the pandemic. And you know, one of the other components of our markets is really that we provide a space for hu human connection, social connection. And while it looks a lot different right now because of the pandemic, instead of sitting down and listening to music and eating good food with people instead it's like you wave at somebody in a car you have a quick conversation you connect with volunteers but i will say when i leave the market space i feel better i feel more energized and i feel connected and that's the same thing that i've heard from volunteers from farmers from other community members and so we really love it for that reason as well so again at the community food banks santa cruz river farmer market we feed people, we feed relationships, and yep. we feed the local food economy. Exactly, exactly. It's and, a win. And we do it every Thursday from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. The address is 221 South Avenida del Convento. Thanks, Abigail, and our Farmer's Market Program. And thank you, all of our donors and our farm-to-table guests this year, because of you. We've been able to feed so many families in great need here in Southern Arizona throughout this pandemic. It matters now more than ever. Your support matters now more than ever. Communityfoodbank.org slash farm to table. Please consider making a donation today. Check out those silent auction items. Thank you for your great generosity. Everyone's been so helpful and generous throughout this pandemic. Without you, we're not feeding Southern Arizona. Thank you.